Hello, my name is Özmen Adıbelli and it's great to be here in Dubai. This is my second one, second visit I attended last year's summit and it was exciting for me to speak at this Agile and Lean Middle East Summit. I am currently working at Pegasus Airlines as a product owner and I started my career as a software developer at TAV Airport in Istanbul. Then I joined a Frankfurt-based company named Information Design, and I met Agile and Scrum at that company. It was a real enlightenment for me. Uh, I realized that another world might be possible for me. I have been working for Pegasus Airlines for three years, and I lead Agile Transformation. But today, I won't tell you our transformation story. We already listen great stories and learning useful lessons, but I mainly focus on the benefits our products provide. Because sometimes when we look back, we may see a gap between what we have dreamed and what we achieved. So today, I want to talk about how to deliver products that solve real problems and give benefits. Is there life? in outer space. If you think there may be, please raise your hand. Thank you. For centuries, we have been expecting answer for this question. In our solar system, besides Earth, the biggest possibility of life existence is on Mars. So has life ever existed on Mars, or is it possible in the future? To find answers for those tough questions, NASA started Curiosity Project. In November 26, 2011, Curiosity took off. Two-thirds of rovers that have targeted Mars before failed. Some of them even didn't reach Mars. Some of them reached Mars, but connection with Earth lost. And Curiosity rover is not just a geologist like other rovers. She is also a biologist, can analyze materials. There is a laboratory inside. So she is the heaviest rover. So landing on Mars is a little bit risky. So NASA team. is nervous, let's watch the last 15 seconds of landing on Mars. If this works. Serious scientists became happy like children, and they deserve to be happy, because after eight months long travel, Curiosity has landed on Mars securely. And she sent the first photo to the Earth. A little bit sad, lonely, no one to talk, or more precisely, no device to transfer data. But thanks to social media, she can share selfies if the clicker works. Sorry. Sorry about that.
Do we have one? Thank you. Let me try the, the other one again. Şu an çalışmıyor. Nasıl kapatıyor? Yeni mi denesem tekrar? Right, let's try it. She can share selfies and do doesn't need a selfie stick since she's a NASA technology. But this is not a NASA technology, <laughs> I think. And it works now, but okay, thank you for help. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, <laughs> thank you. This is the agile way, yeah, thank you. And all day long, Curiosity travels, analyzes, and by mean traveling, it's just faster than a turtle. And during the sunset, she collects the data of the day and sends the data to the Earth. NASA evaluates the data and sends back to task list of the day after Back to Curiosity. Curiosity works with detailed plans. Maybe the missing thing is just a daily stand-up. She is a ja true agile rover. And NASA does not create a long and detailed plan for Curiosity. Instead, they have a roadmap. Reaching places, there may be water and investigating if there was life or not. And life isn't perfect. A rock damaged one of Curiosity's wheels. At this point afterwards, she had to choose smoother roads. Curiosity has to be agile because if uncertainty is that huge, you don't want to create long and detailed plans at the beginning with limited knowledge you have. You want to plan better by discovering continuously. NASA has big budgets for projects. World's based scientists, intelligent people, engineers work for NASA, but most of the projects failed before, and they had to succeed at Mars, which is still unknown for us. So, so far, Curiosity has done a tremendous job. We learned tons of things. Okay then, what's the secret behind this successful team? First of all, people from different backgrounds. Software engineers, geologists, biologists, mechanical engineers work as one team. They have one common goal. Has life ever existed before on Mars? To understand the success better, we need to go back on time. The year is 1961. Now, imagine yourself as the president of United States of America. 
you are in a space race with Soviet Union and you want to be the first nation to step on the moon. You need to create a vision, a goal, so that your nation will follow you. What do you say? If we think like an executive from our enterprise world, we may say, our mission is to become the international leader in the space industry through maximum team-centered innovation and strategically targeted aerospace initiatives. Wow, it's so cool. But the problem is, I didn't get anything. If you think about the goal here, maybe dozens of different goal definitions, this is a challenging goal. We will have challenge. We need a clear guide. The president of those days, John F. Kennedy, said that, I believe this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out, out of landing a man on the moon, returning safely to the earth. We are talking about a nation that should follow the vision. So it's that clear. Everyone understands the same thing. And it's a challenging goal. Some scientists said that it was impossible. But it was also very exciting. People believed in the vision. And also, the vision has a deadline in this decade. <coughs> People are always the same. We are reaching our goals when we are so close to deadlines. In 1969, Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon. And today, we have footprints of curiosity on Mars. And in 10 or 15 years, we expect human footprints on Mars. Hollywood published the movie, so I think there is no obstacle anymore to succeed. We also shouldn't see our projects like tasks we achieve. It doesn't mean it's a better product if we work harder and harder. We need a clear vision and let the team share that vision. But I'm not talking about hanging vision boards on the wall of the company. I'm talking about the team with believing the mission with heart, with mind. And after some time, our vision may be obsolete. We need to review it, changing lifestyle, technology, market facts. You know, we love to manage people, right? But first, we need to manage our vision. We all have great ideas. We think that if those ideas come true, we will start something not possible before. We will start doing something better. As a result, we think that our organizations will make more money. Is this an idea, a project? Yeah, why not? Let's find a project manager to manage it. Project manager holds long meetings, takes notes. In this abstract phase, we think that we understand each other clearly. But Bernard Shaw does not agree with us. He said that the, biggest, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. Even the communication is that hard, we think that we spend hours of meetings. We are intelligent people. Of course, we understood what the problem was and what the, pro what the solutions can be. So the magical phase starts. We are creating the project plan. I witnessed that people are creating the plans without talking to anyone, doing overtime for days, even for weeks. Those plans are crazy. I get it. We don't like uncertainty. But we sacrifice more valuable things. Did we discover customer needs? Are we solving the right problems? Can our users use the product? We stop asking those questions. The plan is created and published. Everyone is relieved. We are happy. Then project manager starts to focus on something. 
Is it the product? No, after months, there is no product. Is it user? We definitely understood what they wanted. It's the plan. If tasks are going on schedule, we are doing fine. Are we giving benefits? We don't know. We have to believe. The project manager really works too hard to succeed. If the tasks are not going on schedule, depending on authority he has, asks team, how are we doing? Mr. Blah Blah want us to accomplish these tasks this week, please. But he thinks that, why am I the only one who works too hard? No one owns the project. He understands that he is alone. No one works for the sake of the project. Everyone works to get rid of tasks assigned. User meets the product. Wow, a great job, but this is not solving my problem. How can I use this product? Then the magical phase starts, the most enjoying phase. Starting to fight about who is right. Turning back to users' requirements documents, and IT is not getting us, or customers don't know what they want. They're always changing their ideas. The biggest problem is not not working hard. It's doing the wrong things. Following unvalidated ideas. Think about a great team doing wrong things, following wrong ideas. You will have a great product that no one will use. We think that we understood customers very well in the beginning with limited knowledge and we create long and detailed plans. Then we hug those plans and don't want any change. We want someone to own the project. We assign project managers to own it, but the team that will actually do the job, how much do they own? We ignore. At Pegasus Airlines, as a software development team, what are we doing to overcome those problems? Our flight crews are transported from their home to airports by our vehicles. One of our departments plan those vehicles, who will be in which vehicle at what time, and etc. They were planning on Excel manually, and they wanted to do it on an application. Since this is, a, this is about mastery, about maps, and etc., they went out to tender. But they didn't get the result they have wanted, so they asked us to implement the product. And it was an exciting idea for us. We read the contracts. There are many, many items about features applications should have. When you read it, you think, what a lovely app <laughs> it would be. But I didn't get why would this application exist? What problems would this application solve? I didn't get it. So we made our first, very first meeting with our users. During the whole meeting, everyone talked about solutions. Traffic data, configurations, pricing. At the end of the meeting, I didn't get what I wanted again. I get it, people love to talk about solutions because ideas get us excited. But this is like you go to a doctor, tell the doctor, give me a pill for my throat. The one should find the solution is not you, it's the doctor. Maybe you have a problem in your stomach, that's why your throat is burning. We wanted to make another meeting, this time called problems. It's forbidden to talk about solutions. It was hard, but we made it. We understood that our flight crews Main responsibility is flight safety. Besides that, we expect catering service, friendly service, and etc. More aircrafts, more flights, more passengers mean more flight crews. So the vehicle planning process ended longer and longer, finished at late in the night. So our crews are informed about their pickup time later in the night tired resting problem. They traveled so much longer 
the time <coughs> tightness problem because there is no map to plan on. We plant much vehicles. High cost problem. So we made a progress from a contract telling us tons of features to implement into a simple problems diagram. Maybe we would implement some of the features, and maybe not. We would find a better, a better innovative ideas. We couldn't know in advance. So the next meeting is the vision meeting. We named our products, we checked our problems, we decided our target customers, business goals, how can we help company to eat, reach its goals, and we decided our first vision. By means of map, we will cut manual planning time in half. Therefore, our crews will know their pickup time earlier. They, we expect shorter travels because of planning on map. And again, we expect fewer vehicles. Have is there anyone to have you have, uh, ever used Uber before? Wow. What is the magical moment of Uber? Great. Or is it the perfect login experience? Is, is it easy configurations? Or is it the easy payment process? In Uber app, you select your pickup location, and in minutes, driver arrives and opens the door for you. This is the magical moment of Uber. We don't care about login experience, configurations, or easy payments. And we thought that our product should have these moments. With our product, our flight crews will have the energy they need to focus on their responsibilities. That's our magical moment. At the end of the day, our goal is not a delivering a software. Our goal is making people's life better. That's it. To reach that goal, we didn't create a plan, as you guess, long, detailed one. Instead, the first thing we did is thinking about would our ideas work? We have tons of ideas, right? How can we validate those ideas as soon as possible? So we wanted to build a product in three weeks containing all of our ideas, creeps on map, the planner plans vehicles, sends the vehicle plan to transportation provider, end to end. So, okay then, how would we implement so much features in three weeks? Of course, just focus on the essentials. I'm talking about a product which is not capa fully capable, but enough to test our ideas. Co-founder of LinkedIn, Reid Hoffman, said that if you are not embraced by the first version of your product, you have launched too late. In our first sprint review, demonstrating our the very first version of our, of our product, it was really hard. And sitting next to customers, watching them trying to use our product, it was torture for us. Believe me. We also want to be proud of our application, right? As everyone else, but our purpose is different. Validating our, our ideas as soon as possible. At this point, Company culture is critical. If your company culture promotes seeing smart, seeing successful, that's not, that's not your way. It won't do you any good. But if your company encourages you to learn quickly as possible, that's your way. We discovered that our ideas would work, but some of them didn't make any sense. We threw them out. 
So we planned upcoming every version with the same approach. We delivered every three weeks, received feedback, and again. People can give best decisions only by experiencing. Let's watch a project started in Stockholm, Arlanda Airport. For instance, you are going to Hong Kong and you enter into climate portal, you think that, wow, Hong Kong is warmer than I expected. So you run into the shops to buy a new pair of sunglasses. For passenger and airport, it's a win-win. Of course, airport's win is a little bit bigger. <laughs> it's the same for our customers. If, we, if even we tell them it will be 27 centigrade degrees, they cannot decide what's wrong, what's right without experiencing. That's why we deliver every three weeks and receive feedback. But we have tons of ideas. Do we have to wait three weeks for all of our ideas? At this point, we try to use the climate portal. We create prototypes. There is nothing works actually. Only images coming one after another. But users feel that they are actually using a product. And we validate and learn what's wrong, what's right in one or two days. Understanding customer needs cannot be squeezed in a phase called gather requirements. During the whole project, we need to create the environment to discover what they need. All of us asking this question, how can we be more productive? We destroyed our barriers between us. We have open offices to collaborate. That's great. But I think we have new issues. Individually, <coughs> Can you have enough time, interrupted time, to deliver creative results? I mean, do you have one or two hours to just focus on your task or your job? Let's see what a study tells about meetings. 45% of people attended in meetings feel overwhelmed. 73% of them did another work during the meeting and my favorite one, 91% of them daydreamed during the meeting. That's creative, <laughs> at least. We, we are doing six hours sprint planning before a three-week sprint. 
we discovered that meetings longer than one hour are not effective. That's us. And we cut these six hours planning into one hour small meetings. That way, when someone says meeting, people don't, not, don't, cry, don't try to kill themselves first. And also, when we receive a feedback in a meeting, we have enough time to review our backlog. That way, we encourage giving and receiving feedback. Individually, we receive 304 emails weekly on average. And after reading an email, it takes 16 minutes to refocus on our job. Email is awful for collaboration. There are tons of people in 2CC, long writings, it's messy. But email is great for notifications. We use an issue tracker. When an issue is updated, it's only related people are informed. That way, we, we don't deal with huge amount of emails between us. We communicate face to face. Rest is hand handled by our issue tracker. Miss Universe 2015. Miss Colombia and Miss Philippines are the last two finalists. Let's watch. Colombia won, Miss Colombia, one side happy, one side sad. That's the nature of a contest, right? But afterwards, something interesting happens. The host, Steve Harvey, which is also a comedian, thanks to come back, comes back to stage. Sorry, sorry, folks. <laughs> the real Miss Universe is not Miss Colombia, is Miss Philippines. Then, the last years. Come again, please. Again. Again, next. I will try it. Last years, Miss Universe takes crown from Miss Colombia and gives it to Miss Philippines. That's really sad. And this is a disaster for that big organization because six million people watched on TV. But is it the only Steve Harvey, the host's fault responsibility? Let's put ourselves in the shoes of Steve Harvey. It's the most exciting moment in the contest. You are walking to the stage. Backstage people always telling you something in the ear. And you need to excite people and announce the winner. Let's see what's written on the card. <laughs> on the left side, first runner-up, second runner-up are listed. And on the right most bottom, there's a tiny Miss Universe. 
Nothing stands out, even the winner. But what if the card was designed like this? It's clear that Miss Universe is Miss Philippines. You can understand in maximum in two seconds or so. I'm not saying that this disaster wouldn't happen if the card was designed like this, but it would be the possibility would be lower. It's not about inf the information features we provide. It's about the experience. We must understand how users will use our product. What are what is their biggest pain? How can you relieve that pain? Easier said than none. Our company culture should encourage people to build empathy for our users. And, and then we can deliver products that solve real problems instead of creating new ones. In 2002, former Google CEO walked into the Google's kitchen and hanged this paper on the wall. The project he mentioned was AdWords and he attached the unpleasant results below the paper. Obviously he's not happy about the project but he didn't call an emergency meeting with all AdWords team and telling them how to do, what to do, do it in one month competed or so. Instead, he made a harsh announcement. <clears throat> On the other hand, what did the adverse team do? Demotivated? Feel offended? Or just didn't care? Think about Google's culture. Everyone is proud of what they do, what they achieve. And your CEO says your project sucks. The first thing they did is to organize and find solutions themselves. No one. They found solutions themselves by themselves. So the result is every year 95% of Google's revenue is coming from AdWords. Today, I hope you will remember three things. First one, the uncertainty is, if the uncertainty is huge, we don't want to stick to long and detailed plans. We want to plan better by discovering continuously. To succeed, whoever needed should be in the team. And team should have a clear vision and work, organize themselves to reach that goal, that vision. Last. But not least, understanding what customers want cannot be squeezed in a face. We should create the environment to discover continuously. If we focus on those things, I believe we can use our civilization's biggest assets, our time, our passion, our talents to deliver products that solve real problems and give benefits. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions or ideas to share? Please do not hesitate. Slides? Yeah, of course, of course. I, we will share on slide share at Agile Me. Accounts. All right, then, thank you. Thank you for your time.